Okay. Um, this is going to be like a review for test one. Um, so, I'll try to keep this around 30 minutes. It's about 50 slides, so, so we'll have to go pretty fast. All right. So, in chapter one, don't forget you have to know all the locations. Um, so I could point, if I had uh, someone standing in the anatomical position like this, I could point at different regions, and you would have to name the regions. Like if I pointed at the ear, you would go otic, O-T-I-C. Um, if I pointed at the eye, you would go ocular region. If you say oculus, you know, that's the way it's done in bold on that, on that PowerPoint. Uh, that's fine too. That's the way you use it in a in a sentence. You would use it like ocular, uh, but the grammar of the region it would be oculus, like this was the fronds. But that's not the way you use it in a sentence. You would go, oh, the bone under here is the frontal bone, right? You have a muscle called the frontalis. So things are named after these regions. Um, so I'll take either one, either either the terms that are in bold or the ones that are not in bold on that uh, on that slide. And there's a bunch of them. So, you know, like the chin was mentis, but you use it in a sentence like mental. Uh, the mouth would be oris, O-R-I-S, but generally you use it pertaining to like oral, the oral cavity. Nasus is nasal. Uh, Facies or facial, buckle for cheek, uh, cervical for neck, uh, cephalic for head, acromion for shoulder, axilla for armpit, brachial region, anticubital region, uh, uh, antibrachial region, the forearm. Then you have the carpal, you know, the, the like carpal tunnel syndrome, the wrist. Don't forget the. Uh, the uh, thumb would be pollux. These would be digits. I guess technically they're all digits. Uh, palm, um, abdominal region, umbilical, like for the uh, umbilical cord, the belly button. Uh, mamma or mammary, thoracics, thoracic, sorry, um, region here. Inguinal, where you can get an inguinal hernia, femoral for this, pelvic here. Patellar for kneecap, crus, C-R-U-S, for the shin, sura, for the calf, kind of weird, behind the knee, I don't have this guy flipped around, but that would be popliteus, and behind, you know, the, the buttocks would be the gluteus or gluteal region, anyway, uh, just make sure you know all those terms on, on that slide, because you know I'm going to ask five or six of them, don't forget big toe would be hallux, foot would be ped, or Pez, ankle would be tarsal, you know, those things. I'm leaving some out, but you get the idea, <laughs> okay? Also, I can have something like this. Make sure you know transverse plane, sagittal plane, and frontal plane. There's one we left off. Anything at an angle would be oblique. Um, frontal, they also use the word coronal, so that's fine, too. You only have one mid-sagittal plane, but you can have just a infinity, basically, a parasagittal. Para means the site. Uh, however thin you could cut them, you know, that would be parasagittal. Okay. Um, these are just directions. This is kind of a nice slide. Of course, you won't have the answers on the slide. I might would put a green dot and a red dot. I'd go, the green dot is in what direction from the red dot? Or something like that. But, um... On a limb, you have to use proximal and distal. You cannot use superior and inferior. You can't use superior and inferior on a limb. Uh, you have to use proximal and distal on a limb. So here, going to the outside would be lateral. Going towards the midline would be medial. Uh, you can also, on, the, on this area here, you can use cephalic and caudal, or cranial and caudal. You know, towards the head, caudal means tail. Anterior, posterior. Now, if you're just on this trunk region, you can use ventral and dorsal. Um, you got to be careful here because if you use ventral and dorsal on the arms, like this, you know, the way this guy has his arms facing you here, uh, that's the ventral side. The backs 
of those arms and hands would be the dorsal side. But our legs are twisted around under us evolutionarily because we're bipedal. So technically, this is the dorsal side, right? The tops of the feet are dorsal, the bottoms of the feet are ventral, all up the back right here. This is ventral. Now, some medical schools are trying to change that. Technically, it's not true, but they're trying to call everything on the front ventral, everything on the back dorsal. So just be careful, whichever school you go to, they may change it. But in real life, the front here, that's dorsal. The bottoms of the feet and the back right here on the legs, that's ventral. Okay. All right. Avities. You're divided into... Um, a dorsal cavity, which would be the cranial cavity, and I say spinal cavity, but if you said vertebral, I'd give it to you. That's fine. Um, so both of those make up the dorsal cavity. So if I point at this and say, what cavity is that? Be specific. I'm wanting you to say vertebral or spinal cavity. If you said dorsal, you would get half a point because that's not specific. You see what I'm saying? But, you know, half a point's better than none. Um, on the ventral cavity, see the ventral? You got subdivisions in here. Uh, you have the abdominal cavity, the pelvic cavity, and the thoracic cavity. And there's also subdivisions within this, within these. Uh, so in the thoracic cavity, um, you have uh, the two pleural cavities and you have the pericardial cavity. And then you got this space. Technically, I don't know if they change this. We'll have to look it up in your book. But all the way around here and here, the space that encompasses all of this, they call the mediastinum or the mediastinal space. Technically, it's not a cavity because it's not truly membrane bound. Um, but anyway, look that up in your book and see what they're describing as the mediastinum or the mediastinal cavity now because I want to make sure I don't lead you astray there. Um Here's the abdominal cavity and the pelvic cavity. You got to kind of use a little imagination here because it's not a true, it's not completely a, a membrane that goes all the way across. You kind of got to use your imagination here. Now, it's not on this slide, but we talked about it. If you drew a cavity within this big cavity here, so where are my little arrows going? That would be the peritoneal cavity. So most of your intestines are, you know, in digestive. Uh, organs are within the peritoneal cavity. Can some things be retroperitoneal behind it? Yeah, like the kidneys. That's a good example. They're behind the peritoneal cavity. And if we were doing a dissection on a cat, you would be able to kind of visualize that. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe when we get to digestive and urinary, I'll, I'll be able to do a little dissection for you and uh, zoom that or something. All right, now we're gonna go into the 11 organ systems. These are in no particular order. Uh, we're just doing the big parts, right? We're not doing all the little tiny, tiny parts because we're gonna take a lot of these things individually, systems in other tests. Right now we're just learning the big stuff. So respiratory system is for gas exchange. You know, a basic function of each system in case I ask you, just like a one sentence blurb. If I point at the trachea, say trachea, if I point at either one of these primary bronchi, bronchus is singular, bronchi is plural, that would be a right primary bronchus, left primary bronchus, right lung, left lung. That's it. That's all I'm giving you on respiratory right now. We'll talk about the membranes later. Okay. Here's the digestive system. Right? Esoph so make sure you know the big stuff like esophagus, stomach. Small intestine, it's all of this is small intestine. You don't need to know the separate parts of the small intestine, right? Large intestine or colon, you don't need to know the separate parts of that yet, right? Uh, this would be rectum, anus, and out, right? What else can we see here? You can see a little bit of the pancreas back here. That's part of the digestive system. You have the liver, that's part of the digestive system. And you have the gallbladder, and the gallbladder stores and releases bile. It doesn't make the bile. The liver makes the bile, and then the gallbladder stores it and releases it. And it will help emulsify fat. It doesn't chemically break it down. It just makes it into smaller and smaller little globules, same amount of fat. But then 
lipase, the enzyme that breaks down fat, can work on it better. Uh, it's not in this slide, but you don't forget the salivary glands up there. You don't need to know the separate ones, but if I point at them on a model or whatever, you should be able to go, oh, salivary gland. Okay. Urinary system, I'm just giving you four things right now. Kidneys, right? Ureter, I'm saying it wrong, so you'll spell it right, is ureter. U-R-E-T-E-R, -E -E right? Make sure you spell that right or you're going to get counted off. Here's the bladder, and then from the bladder out will be the urethra. Make sure you spell that one right. Because <laughs> if you have a kidney stone stuck in the ureter, it's totally different than one that's being stuck in the urethra. So you're going to be writing these things in charts. So, okay. <laughs> Skin, hair, and nails. That's the integumentary system, right? Um, and it's mainly for protection. Um, oh, I left something out. Anyway, I have a uh, I have a picture of a thumbnail somewhere in, in, in here, unless I accidentally deleted it. But anyway, um, skin, hair, and nails. Uh, that's the integumentary system, and like I said, it's mostly mostly for protection. Cardiovascular system, right? Um, so here's the heart, and it's showing some, well, let's look at this, that's a cool picture. Anyway, heart, you got arteries and veins. So if you're way away from the heart here, like that's an aorta, that's a vena cava, so that's an artery, that's a vein. The red one here is an artery, that's a vein. So generally they draw oxygenated vessels in red, deoxygenated in blue. Uh, you can't always go by that, because it's different from textbook to textbook. Um... But anyway, I, this is intro, so I'm not going to get, I'm not going to give you a weird one like a pulmonary trunk, which is technically an artery, and so it's deoxygenated. So they usually do not color it in red. Um, I'll, maybe it's on that other slide. But if I point at that, you just go artery, vein, <laughs> right? So here, oh, this is what I was talking about. So there's your aorta, that's an artery, obviously. So arteries carry blood away from the heart and veins carry blood to the heart. We're not talking about the actual blood vessels of the heart itself. We're talking about these larger guys here. This is a pulmonary trunk and then it divides into pulmonary arteries. But you see the way they drew it in blue because that's deoxygenated blood. That's why they drew it in blue and it's going to the lungs to get oxygenated. Once it's oxygenated, it comes back into pulmonary veins like these guys. And they drew those in red because even though they're bringing blood to the heart in their veins, they're full of oxygen. So there's little, there's exceptions, right? So that's why I wouldn't get you confused here. I would point like I did on the other other slide. Now, um, I could do the chambers. Make sure you know the top are the atria. Atria is plural. Atrium is singular. So that would be right atrium, left atrium. Right ventricle, left ventricle. If you get confused, look at how thick the muscle is on the left ventricle on the outside compared to this. It should be drawn a little bit thicker than that, actually. And because um, that left ventricle is generally more muscular because it's pumping to the body, the aorta. See, so it's got to have more pressure. All right. Same amount of volume as pump, just more pressure. Um, this would be your lymphatic system. Uh, we're pointing at too many things here, but um, um, basically, what could I point at? I could point at a spleen. This is a thymus. Don't say thyroid. That's a totally different gland. Thymus. Um, you got lymphatic vessels everywhere. You got lymph nodes right here. Those are fair game. Uh, the thymus is fair game. I wouldn't do it here because you can't really see what we're pointing at, but you could uh, point at tonsils. Um, I guess that's what they're trying to point out. I can't see it. Um, but anyway, you, you have some tonsils up there. It's on. Uh, show a good one on your uh, regular PowerPoint. All right, so here's a sagittal cut of a male reproductive system, right? So I only gave you six things to know on the male, right? So here's penis. That's fair game. So here is the urethra. You go, wait a minute. I thought the urethra was part of the urinary system. Well, it is. But in the male, it's also a shared passageway for sperm and urine. Whoop. And so um, it's double duty. Okay. 
Here's a testis and the little organ on top of it. It's kind of like a little storage area. That's the epididymis. Make sure you spell it right. It's on the other PowerPoint, epididymis. Here's the vas deferens. They're trying to call it the ductus deferens now. I like uh, vas deferens seems easier because everybody's heard of vasectomy. Here's the prostate gland, right? So let's count them. Testes one, epididymis two, vas, de vas deferens three, prostate gland four, urethra five, and penis, that would be six. So I gave you six point names on the male, right? On the female, I only gave you, I think, four point names, right? So I gave you ovary, fallopian tube, uterus, and vagina. So don't get confused. This is the bladder. This is the uterus, right? And notice on the female, the uterus, uterus, I mean, sorry, the, let me start over. So on the bladder, the urethra, right? The urethra is not part of the reproductive system. It's totally separate. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, where in the male, it is part of the reproductive and part of the urinary system. So, right, let's reiterate so you don't get lost. So you got ovary, fallopian tube, uterus, vagina. Okay. But on this same model, if I wanted to point it, bladder and urethra i could do that <laughs> okay this is just uh the uterus from a frontal cut and you can see the ovaries and you can see the fallopian tubes they also call them uterine tubes i don't like that we have enough stuff that starts with a u here's the uterus and then it, it, if you went on down here i'm not they didn't do a very good drawing job here then you would go into the vagina okay so on uh on this so it would uh, let's see what would be fair game on here like i said uh throw out throw out the pituitary gland in the in the hypothalamus in the pineal we're not going to do that uh, we're just looking at some glands here for the endocrine system. Okay, so thyroid, that's fair game. Our, my other PowerPoint's way better. Flip that around, you got four little bumps on, on the back to the sides. Those are parathyroids, right? Um, so thymus is one of those double duties remember it's in the lymphatic system but it does make one hormone so they threw it in with endocrine okay on top of the adrenal glands there's um i mean sorry on top of the kidneys there's the adrenal glands and they make adrenaline which is epinephrine they make other stuff too um don't forget your pancreas. It's, it makes digestive enzymes, so it's part of the digestive system, but it also makes insulin and glucagon, right? Insulin lowers the blood sugar, glucagon raises it. So most of that pancreas is making digestive enzymes, right? But there are little islands that make hormones. So that's why they have this in the uh, endocrine slide here, okay? Pituitary pineal hypothalamus so we're not whoop what happened whoop wrong way so we're not going to do those until we get to endocrine and also uh neural there's some overlap some sometimes there's some neuroendocrine you know <laughs> kind of structures um but we're not going to do pituitary or pineal or hypothalamus till we get to test four okay and test five um or is it test six i can't remember <laughs> okay um <clears throat> ovaries so there's they're showing both here right so ovaries are also endocrine because think estrogen progesterone testes are also endocrine because of testosterone but these are double duty again, right? So the ovaries are also in the reproductive system. Testes are also in the reproductive system. So don't get confused. Some organs or structures are in two different systems. This is the one that got out of place. Anyway, 
there's the nail really um so epinetium is fair game that little cuticle area right there this is the little uh half moon shape called union lunula it's just point name and then underneath the nail they didn't show it would be the hypo Nietzschean hypo is below if you would be above okay um so eponychium hyponychium and lunula are fair game on a on a figure like this brain and spinal cord that would be your uh nervous system and that's all i'm giving you right now we're not giving you any nerves or receptors really um on this uh don't worry on test four we'll go into this a lot uh but anyway brain and spinal cord so they use chemical messengers known as what and you would go neurotransmitters where if we're looking at endocrine you go endocrine system using chemical messengers known as what you would go hormones hormones are slower acting have longer lasting effect neurotransmitters are quick they happen quick and break down quick right um so muscle system we're not uh, learning any separate muscles just if i point out here and go is that axial or appendicular uh, muscle out there you would go hmm appendicular and then like oh, i'd probably flip them around and point it like the rectus abdominis or something like that and you go oh what division is that you go axial it's like an axis going down the middle same thing with bones make sure you know axial division is this is in green appendicular is in purple the only place it gets a little confusing is if you point at this you know like the ilium or the ischium or the pubic bone that's that's appendicular uh what bones are fair game i gave you some in the skull remember frontal temporal parietal and occipital also gave you maxilla and mandible we gave you vertebra Make sure you know the big guys. These, I'm, these are just the big things, right? Humerus, ulna, and radius. Make sure you know those. Femur, longest one in the body. And then don't confuse the tibia, that's this big guy, with the little fibula out here. So, remember that? So, let's go over it again. Frontal, temporal parietal and in the back would be occipital that's fair game maxilla and mandible and then we did vertebra and then we did humerus radius ulna we did femur tibia and fibula so any of those can show up but none of the others okay now we're going on into our tissues so remember it can either your tissue can either be simple or it can be stratified. If it's one cell layer deep, it's simple. Then you just name it by what it looks like. You go, oh, these look like columns. See how beautiful this is? These are simple columnar epithelia. So you gotta give me all three names to totally name the tissue. It's simple, it's columnar, and it's epithelia, right? So the basement, so this is the lumen technically. Um, this is the basement membrane right here. Okay, and look how perfectly those nuclei lined up. I don't know why they tend to line up down by the basement membrane. Don't know why. This looks like a brush border, so that's probably microvilli right there. Looks totally different than cilia. Don't call them cilia. So these are the apical surfaces, and down here would be the basal surfaces. Remember, all epithelia has five characteristics in common, right? It's... um say it has cellularity one cell is connected to another one another one another one another one right it kind of almost makes like a sheet uh they're attached to a basement membrane there you go they have a top and a bottom right apical basal in this case uh they if you cut them or damage them they can regenerate um what am I leaving out? I'm leaving one out. Cellularity. Oh, avascular. There's no blood vessels in the epithelia itself. It would be in the connective tissue, maybe out here. <laughs> okay. So, how what would you name this one? Well, they look like little cube. Simple, cuboidal epithelium. Really beautiful. Right? That's some kind of duct. Probably out of a, who knows, a kidney or whatever. These are simple squamous tubes, by the way. Look how skinny the squamous is compared to a cuboidal so cuboidal it looks like the uh 
nuclei smack dab in the middle of the cytoplasm. So you see, beautiful. This is simple squamous, but you're looking at it from the top. So simple squamous, uh, it looks like the tiles on the floor. All I can really point at are nuclei or your membranes, but it exhibits all the same things. Cellularity, attachment to a basement membrane, which would be under here. Um, avascular, no blood vessels. It can regenerate, and then it's got polarity, a top and a bottom. We're looking at the top. Okay. So that's you bottle from the side, it looks like to me. Right? Um, they're a little rounded, but you got to use your imagination. The nucleus smack dab in the middle. Okay. And by the way, this is not it, but there is a there is uh, a tissue called transitional epithelium. It's found in the bladder and the uterus, and it'll be more than one layer deep. It'll be like it'll look like this, except for it'll be several deep, right? And the side facing the lumen will be puffy like this. <laughs> so that's the way you tell. This is just an artifact here that these happen to give you that effect. So I'm not going to show you transitional on a slide. So if you saw this on a slide, see they look more like good cubes down here. Just call this simple cuboidal. You're just cut long ways, right? Instead of a duct coming at you, would look like that. But if you cut this like that, then it would give you this effect, <laughs> right? As you're looking down the length of it. So this is just simple cuboidal, even though it does look kind of puffy. Um, I'm not going to show you transitional on this test. We'll do that on when we get to, uh, you know, the urinary system on another test way down the road. But I could ask you, bonus, what tissue is inside of the bladder? What's the name of it? You go transitional epithelial tissue. Okay. It's in the ureters too. Okay. And it's kind of stretchy. So if the bladder's really full, it doesn't look like this anymore. It, they'll, it'll just look like stratified squamous. Okay. But like I said, this is a simple cube bottle. It's just just kind of a, kind of a weird looking one. <clears throat> They'd look more cube bottle down here. Okay. This is out of the kidney also. I just wanted to show you everything we did in green here. That's simple squamous. So this is a Bowman's capsule. Uh, you know, in, in the kidney, you got lots and lots and lots of these. And it's a sphere of, uh, uh, you know, these. Are, this is just like a little capillary. It's called a uh, glomerulus. Don't worry about that. Uh, but this is where a lot of filtration takes place. And then this sphere of simple squamous is all the way around this, and it catches the filtrate in this area. So I just wanted to show you how darn skinny simple squamous is from the site. That's why I don't really show you from the side. I show you from the top like this, right? But I just wanted you to get an appreciation of that. And even though you can't see them too well, these are ducts, these are, are, are tubules, and they're simple cuboidal. See, see how the nuclei smack dab in the middle? They're just a little bit murky, so it's hard to see. Look at here. <clears throat> this is stratified squamous so this is skin it's keratinized skin right um and it's thin this is not thick so we just miss the usually there's hair right that might be growing if this is out of the scalp or whatever um or the you know just somewhere where there's hair growing thin skin um this is stratified squamous and here's the dead stuff up here so this is stratum corneum up here uh this would be the dermis down here so this connective tissue down here mostly um well don't forget your strata we'll talk about that uh, I, we've talked about that a lot on the other one maybe you got stratum i think i've got a slide with it uh, we'll come back to it this say this was the same cut of skin but you just zoomed in on a hair follicle right this is beautiful sebaceous glands right here See the sebaceous glands? And you can't really see. They, they miss the little duct. But remember, they empty through a duct onto an epithelial surface. And so the hair follicle and the hair right here is where it would be emptying. This is just another view. Look at that beautiful sebaceous gland. 
It's emptying onto here. Remember, holocrin mode of secretion. So it's an oily gland. There's the hair, by the way. And um, so it's a holocrin mode of secretion. Okay. I love this slide. That's an erector pili. See the way it's cutting across kind of at an angle? And that pulls on that hair, and it makes it stand up straight. Okay. This is your stratified squamous. Look how skinny it is up here. This is all dermis. And you can even see, here's my papillary layer of my dermis. And here's my reticular layer of my dermis. Okay. Um, this is mostly dense irregular. Up in here is mostly areolar. Right. Um, so that sebaceous gland, it's epithelium, it's derived from epithelium, just like the uh, follicle is. Uh, this is a sebaceous gland, right? You see, it kind of gives you that tiles on the floor effect. Look, it looks like a sack of cells. Where if you cut across a sweat gland, a sweat gland is like a garden hose, it's all coiled up. And so it's going to give you a bunch of little ducts when you look, when you cut across it. All this is connected. And I don't know how they looked out, but there's your little duct going onto an epithelial surface. Remember, exocrine glands go through a duct onto an epithelial surface. Usually they miss this in the cuts because it's pretty tiny. And the odds are you're not going to split that all the way down. It's hard to do. Um, so... Remember, this uses merocrine mode of secretion. Remember merocrine, where this uses holocrine mode of secretion. A mammary gland, which I don't have on here, uses an apocrine mode of secretion. So make sure you look those up and you, you can define merocrine mode of secretion, apocrine mode of secretion, holocrine mode of secretion, and give me an example of which gland uses what. And, you know, tell me exactly what that means you know, American apocrine versus Holocaust. This is a nice model. We have this in our lab. But that's an apocrine sweat gland. That's kind of what we were just looking at. And there goes your little duct onto an epithelial surface, right? So this is the not smelly one. And here they just cut across it. And it gives you that wormy effect, that little, uh, it looks like a bunch of little ducts effect. This is a sebaceous gland. And then they cut across it and it gives you that sack. Of, so this looks like a sack of cells. That looks like a bag of worms, right? Um, here's an erector pili, right? So it's kind of neat to see it on the microscope slide and then to see it on the model. There's a little Meissner's corpuscle for light touch. There's a Pacinian corpuscle for deeper touch. Here's my three big layers, epidermis, dermis, hypodermis, okay? Let's see if we have any hypo... Nah, I don't see it there. No, we were too zoomed in. You don't see the hypodermis in either one of these uh, microscope sites. Here's thick skin. So notice the way there's no hair, right? So this is probably a palm or a bottom of a foot. So look at our stratum. Stratum corneum, look how thick. Stratum granulosum, and believe it or not, it's kind of weird, but they did not get a stratum lucidum in here. So it stained, they really stained it well. Remember, stratum lucidum is not even a real thing. Usually, it, you will see it on thick skin, and it just an area that does not pick up the stain. It's right above the granulosum. Uh, but since it all stained here, they didn't even mark it. Okay? Um, but true or false, stratum lucidum is only seen, seen in thick skin. True. So here's the rest of it, and you go stratum spinosum here, and then you go stratum basal or basal or germinativum at the bottom, and then there's a, can't really see it, but the basement membrane's right there. Okay, dermal papilla, poke up in here, and that's where you can find those Meissner corpuscles sometimes. Okay, guess what? PSCC. Spell it once. Pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Look at the cilia. See how different that looks in that little brush border of microvilli? You can actually see individual cilia. And you look down here and you go, whoa, that looks like that's more than one cell layer. It's not. It's an optical illusion. Each one of these, say that nucleus, belongs to one columnar cell and it's sitting on this basement membrane. This one belongs to another cell, but it might be behind there or in front of there. Uh, and it 
it goes all the way up and has cilia on the top too. So all of these nuclei belong to cells that are connected to the basement membrane. It's just an optical illusion making it look like they're not. It looks stratified, but it's not. Okay. There's a neuron, right? Tissue is this piece, but you know, neural. Um, what is this guy? You go, neuron. <laughs> it's the cell body of a neuron or the soma of a neuron. This is the nucleus. That little dark spot right there is what they call the nucleolus. It's just bunched up chromatin. A lot of times you can see them real good on on uh, neurons. I don't know why. Um, what are these little guys? These are nuclei to neuroglia. They didn't stain, so you don't really see the cells that they belong to. But yeah, you got different kinds of neuroglia. Um, and so these belong uh, to some of those cells, right? Uh, and we'll learn the neuroglia on another test. But so really, what can I ask you on this? What tissue is this? You go neural. What is this that sends information? You go axon. What are these guys that receive information? You go dendrites. Does this use chemical messengers known as what? And you would go neurotransmitters. Um, what are the little sc cells scattered around in the background? You would go neuroglia. And that's about all I can ask you. There's smooth um, muscle. Pretty nice. I like to show it on the intestine where you also have some of it coming at you. Um, that skeletal muscle, see the stripes? But there's some skeletal muscle coming at you. Looks totally different. <laughs> no way I would do that to you. But here, look, it's multinucleated. You can see a few nuclei going down the length of one. And the nuclei are pushed out to the sides because there's so much protein inside. There's no room for the nuclei deep inside the cell. So they're pushed out to the sides. Right? See the way the nuclei are on the sides? And so this is striated, voluntary, multinucleated, voluntary for the most part. There can be exceptions. What is this? It's still striated, but it looks a little different. I only basically see one nucleus per cell, and I see intercalated discs, so boom, I'm looking at cardiac muscle. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful cardiac muscle. These are intercalated discs, and that's where the desmosomes are, and the gap junctions, remember that? So I'm, I, I'm really not going over chapter to a whole lot on this uh, PowerPoint, but remember those questions like that. What are three um, cell to cell, you know, adhesions, you know, remember tight junctions, gap junctions, and desmosomes, you know, and so an uh, intercalated disc is a good place to find desmosomes, and it's a good place to find gap junctions. The tight junctions more like towards exposed surfaces of tissues, you know, they just hold they're more like Velcro, remember? And they kind of keep water from flowing in between uh, cells. Um, so anyway, look over those slides because I don't have that on this PowerPoint. So is this involuntary? Yes. Is it singly nucleated? Yes, according to your book. Is it um, involuntary? Yes. Is it striated? Yes. <laughs> Guess what? Boom. It's compact bone, but you don't even have to know that for this test. No one misses this. It looks like trees. See the rings in the trees? Yeah, nice. Um, and we'll learn way more about this on test two. Hyaline cartilage. See, it's nice and smooth and purple in this ground substance or matrix back here, right? And see the way the lacuna, remember the little, the little houses that the chondrocytes sit in, right? Uh, they're called lacuna. And I don't know why, but two of them tend to go together and they look like owl eyes. Um, so this matrix or ground substance is just your cartilage, basically. And then these are your chondrocytes. Chondro makes cartilage, right? Um, where can you find this? A uh, great place, trachea. There's other places too, but that's a great place. Um, fibrocartilage is a really nice slide. You have a few lacuna. And the nuclei inside the chondrocytes kind of stained red on this slide. It's kind of cool. And the fibers, the collagen fibers, stain blue. A lot of times on fibrocartilage, they'll stain it blue. I don't know why, but it, it helps you identify it. Uh, it's really beautiful here. Where can you find it? It's really tough stuff. So it's intervertebral disc, pubic symphysis. That's two good places to find it. This is the same thing. 
it's just a little different stain, but I still like it. See the blue? A few lacuna scattered around. Fibroblast make these fibers. Remember, fibroblast make collagen fibers. They also make reticular fibers, which are skinny, skinny collagen fibers. And they also make elastic fibers. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is a mixture of collagen and and uh, cartilage. And this is kind of cool. This is elastic cartilage. That's probably out of an ear. Um, it's kind of overstained, but all this blackness in here, that's elastic fibers. I think I got a little better one here. They didn't overstain this one, but you can see the little purple, dark purple, uh, squiggly uh, elastic fibers in here. There's chondrocytes everywhere. Right? Okay. Elastic fibers everywhere. So that's probably out of an ear or a nose. Blood, no way to miss that. Even got a white blood cell in here, but I'm not going to hit you with that. True or false, the red blood cells, the mature ones have nuclei. No, it's gone. And so they're by concave disc, basically. They're kind of sunk in right there. So um, that just makes more room for the hemoglobin. But that's why the light shines through them so good. It makes them look like a donut is because there's no nucleus in there. Okay, there's a little platelet scattered around here too, but don't worry, I'm not going to ask you about that on this test. Another test. So if that's under there and go, what, oh, what tissue is this? Be specific. It is fluid connective tissue, but I'm wanting you to say blood. Okay. There's some more connective tissue, dense, irregular, and we already saw that in the scalp. It's in lots of other places too, but it's the collagen fibers are going every which way. Fibroblasts are making those. Remember, really looks like an abstract painting. This is non-keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, right? So this is not keratinized. So this is probably esophagus. So you can't go by how nice and plump the cells look down here. Look at the tops where they look skinny. So they look like the tiles on the floor or the fried eggs. So this is squamous. It's just stratified squamous. And it's not keratinized. Fat. No way to miss it. Looks like soap bubbles. Every now and then you'll see a nucleus pushed off to one side. I don't know where. It's kind of hard to see. It's overstained. Um, but, um, you know, fat can be behind the eyes, around the kidneys, you know, under the skin. Plenty of places. Okay. This is the one I'm saying you look like a little kid just scribbled with a graphite pencil all over your slide. This is areolar, which is loose connective tissue. Fat's a loose connective tissue also. Right? Um, so you got collagen fibers and probably a la probably some elastic fibers running in here too, but it, it just looks like a kid drew all over your slide, <laughs> right? So that's kind of loose. And remember that areolar is in the papillary uh, layer of the dermis. But if somebody just hands you a slide that says areolar, it's probably a cut out of the lung and they dissolved everything but the connective tissue. That's a good place to find it where it's not mixed in with fat because this stuff is normally mixed in with fat too in a lot of places. Ah, I'm not going to do this to you, but I wanted to show you what dense regular look like and why we don't show it. It looks too, 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 too much like smooth muscle. Okay, and this will be on another test. But if you see something that looks like smooth muscle, call it smooth muscle because I'm not showing you this one. <laughs> This is the cherry blossom slide. And remember I said once you see it, you can't unsee it. Go, oh yeah, look at the little limbs. And then it and then it looks like cherry blossoms. These uh this is reticular uh tissue. It's still a loose uh connective tissue proper. Just like connective tissue proper that was divided into loose and dense. And under loose you had reticular, you had fat, and you had areolar. Under dense, you had dense regular and dense irregular. <laughs> uh, so this is part of our loops. Okay, P makes frameworks for organs. So this is probably a liver or a spleen or you know could be a kidney. If you if you took all the cells out of those organs and just left this connective tissue behind, it's what it would look like. So there's a good looking model. We have that one. So oh look, they do have the hint hint. This the this is a good place to show stratum lucidum. So see the way they did thick skin on one side, they made it real thick, and then they did thin skin on the other side with hair growing through it. Right? They also did dermal papilla over here. Oh look, Meissner's corpuscles here. They did a little eccrine sweat gland, eccrine sweat gland here. 
they did a that's an apocrine remember it's bigger and it's a little bit lower usually um that's an apocrine sweat gland that's a smelly one right uh and then there's an erector pili there's a sebaceous gland there's a hair follicle and a hair shaft and they call that a papilla also at the base there uh generic word papilla just means nipple like projection there's a piscinian corpuscle you can call it lamellated you can call that one tactile i call that meissner's i call that piscinian so whatever floats your boat i think we're done yay all right so i'll uh post this for you okay went a little longer than i thought but it'll be all right